rambling about cars, electric pickup trucks. They're coming. How soon will they get here? Which ones will even make it at all? And perhaps most importantly, will America's truck culture accept them? Oh, this is going to be a good one. They're, I'm not going to lie. There could be some hurt feelings here at the end of this episode. Not necessarily among us, but among some of the listeners out there. So make sure you send us all of your wonderful comments. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, enthusiasts of electricity around the world, it's podcast time. I'm Christopher Smith. Across the screen, as always, is Chris Bruce. How you doing, Bruce? I'm doing great. And I'd like to welcome our guest today, and that's Tom Belogny. Uh, he is a senior editor at Inside EVs, and that's kind of Motor One's sister site. We cover stuff that runs on gasoline. They cover stuff that runs on electricity. And sometimes those two things meet, but generally not. But we're all buddies. We're all kind of in the same chat rooms. We're all talking during the day. And since we're talking about electric pickups, he was an easy choice about someone to have on as a guest today. So welcome, Tom. How are you doing? Excellent. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. No, hey, it's, a, it's a pleasure. And, and it should also be mentioned, um, if you're interested at all in electric vehicles, I mean, inside EVs, it, it's, it's part of our Motor One Motorsport Network family. But I mean, they are the authority pretty much globally for electric vehicles. So we're very excited to have you here because Bruce and I, I mean, we have some electric knowledge, but yeah, oh yeah, we I, write I mean, about you, electric cars. But inside, you guys have six editions worldwide. Is that right? I can't keep track. We keep adding them like every week. There's another. <laughs> okay, now inside of these Russia and inside of these, you know, Italy, and we we're all over the world now. So yeah, it's 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 really spreading. Okay, so first things first. As a new uh, rambling about cars guest. We have some questions to ask. Oh, I totally forgot about the quiz. All right, Bruce. Don't worry, man. I'm on it. So first question, what's your favorite car of the 1980s? Okay, so um, Honda CRX SI. I, I own two of them. And on the second one, I put a nitrous oxide kit on it. So um, that was a blast. I wish I could get one today. I really do. I, my goal would be to buy one and convert it to electric drive, but like it'd probably be like sixty thousand dollars, and it would be worth ten thousand when I was done. So well, well that's you know, we're going to happen. I, like but I would answer, love to though. do that right now. Um, an original, the that original, uh, I think it was an eighty four CRX that Car and Driver commissioned back in the eighties to do a dual engine mm -hmm. build on. That's for sale right now. <laughs> just, I'm just I, saying. I it's already set up for there, two I engines. See, I see them out there every now and then, um, but I know like. You know, r taking a vehicle like that and then just totally restoring it and everything, it would be a project that whatever I estimated would cost twice as much, mm -hmm. and it just isn't in the budget. I'd love to do it, but, you know, I have to live on my memories of my old car with the nitrous oxide kit and roll it up next to Mustang 5.0s. <laughs> which is what Smith owns. <laughs> and toasting them up to, like, 70 miles an hour, then the big V8s would take over, but – from like zero to 60, 70, this little car weighed 1,800 pounds. And uh, uh, it had, I think, 91 horsepower stock, but I added 75 horsepower with the with the nitrous boost. So it was so quick up to like 60, 70 miles an hour, nothing could keep up with me. And then we'd roll up to the next traffic light and they'd be looking at me like, and those 5 old guys would be yeah. all smug, yeah. like smug and, oh, man, what, yeah. what, I didn't yeah. have my nitrous turned on. Let's yeah. do it again. Well, they, did, they would, had no idea that I had nitrous <laughs> in it. So, like, they were just like, holy S, like that little rice burner just kicked my ass. Like, you know, they had to go to the performance shop next the next day and, like, try to <laughs> add some horsepower, you know. But those were good times. Do we even need to go with the rest I mean, of the you're not I mean, really this is a win. Answer, this is a no. win right here. Well, yeah. let, let, let's, 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 let's continue a few more. Real, real uh, quick. Okay. Favorite, but, uh, let, let, me, let, let me have a 1A also. Okay, 1A. Um, so in 1981, my uncle bought a DeLorean. Okay. And – I got Perfect my driver's license. St. Patrick's Day made in Ireland. I got my driver's license in 1985. Mm -hmm. And by 1985, he was sick of it. Okay. And it was just sitting in his driveway. So when I got my driver's license, <laughs> he called me up. He said, you passed your license today? He said, yeah. He said, come on over and pick up the DeLorean. Why would anybody want a DeLorean in so, 1985? That makes so, no sense at all. So, so for like the first three months that I drove, my car was a DeLorean. Okay. Oh and l let me tell you something. Rolling up to like 
the the 7-Eleven in a DeLorean at 11 o'clock at night was better than a Ferrari, a Bentley, <laughs> anything yes. in the 80s. When those doors went, shh, time stopped. It was like no one was cooler than me. But then it broke one day when I had it, like I had electrical problems because they were garbage, you know? Yeah. Um, and then my uncle towed it and I never saw it again. So. But come on, you were driving a DeLorean yeah, in 1985. Yeah. Guys, I was the king for three months. There was 17 yeah. years old. There was nothing. And driving a DeLorean, like that was, that rocked. I mean, so did you have like the orange, did you have the orange vest and the, the <laughs> Marty McFly? Because I, I totally would have. Oh, I, I would have. I, I, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't go that far. It happened too quickly. I think if I had it longer, I might have really played with that. But I was trying to be cool. You know, I wasn't trying to be geeky with the suspend. You know, I was like, you know, it was all oh, about you didn't even have to girls. Try. I mean, I was, uh, you know, I, you know, I just wanted to drive around and pull up to places where there were a bunch of people hanging out and just get out. Like, yeah, it's my DeLorean. Yeah, it's my Get a couple more at home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they, so I'm not, not going to beat that answer. The, like, you're just not. But let, oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> let's What's ask. your let's favorite ask. car of the '90s? It can't be better than that. So probably, um, unless it's a, unless it's a Supra. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Actually. <laughs> I Tom had, owned an F fifty. I had I, I I had a I had a Boxster S. Okay. And okay. um I just loved driving that car. It was it wasn't terribly fast. Uh, I no, mean they were quick. By, no, by 90 standards, that car was yeah, I know, but it properly was properly fast. It was just I you know, you know I didn't even drive it like fast. Like my my CRX with the nitrous, that was what I drove like a maniac. I, I don't know how I survived it. But the boxer I just cruised around with the top down and it was just uh, it was just such a cool car to drive in. My, my memories of the 90s are of me driving that car. And I'll tell you, it barely beat out. I had a uh, 93 twin turbo RX-7. And, um, Wait, and- why are you not on every episode? <laughs> Wait, well, and- <laughs> Smith, I think I need a new co-host. Oh, my and, uh, God. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. So the Boxster barely beat that out only because – um, I just I just remember cruising and in, and just enjoying that car so much. The, the Mazda I loved, but like it kind of came and went. And uh, I just remember the Boxster being like maybe as I get a little bit older, and I just was just love. I remember the top down driving down the shore and just being like, ah, oh, this is great. <laughs> well, okay. Speaking of which, I'll segue into the next question here, and there's just a few more. Um, you have a choice of one: hard top, convertible, or T top. <laughs> okay, today I'm going to go to hardtop. Okay, why? You know, I, towards the end when I had the Boxster, I found myself the last few years like never putting the top down. Just the last couple of years, is because I had it for a while, and I, you know, maybe I'm just an old fart now. I don't know. It was like just a hassle with, uh, you know, I'm living northern New Jersey. There was a couple months out of the year where it was beautiful. I think if I lived in Southern California or Florida, I might have a different opinion about it. And T-tops, I had, it, I didn't have, my two friends had cars with T-tops in the 80s. And I remember they were just such a pain in the ass, taking those things on, putting, they, they didn't seal right. They leaked. And like, I'm definitely not a T-top guy. I, a convertible, yeah, but uh, right now where I am in life, I think I'll just go with the hard top with a, with a nice panoramic glass roof. I love these new roofs that are coming out where they're just all glass and you just look up and you see everything, but you don't get the wind. Okay. okay. Final Another. question, and then we'll move okay. on to our right. topic about electric yep. pickups. Favorite car focused movie? Okay. Geez, now you got, you got to make me think. Why didn't you even prep these ahead of time? And I would remember, you know, Ford v Ferrari was an awesome movie. Okay. Um, yeah. And and that's most recent. I bet if yeah. I think I'd find something from my past that I like better. I mean, Back to the Future with the DeLorean. Yeah. Does that top that? I don't know. Those two are really what stand out in my mind. Yeah, that, no, those you, are you, both good choices. You passed with you passed a long time ago. I yeah, know. between the eighties and mean, the nineties picks, like you were done. You could have just like yeah, you passed with flying colors. So you didn't really say anything else. So for everybody listening, I mean, understand. I mean, I mean, Tom knows EVs, and I know there are a lot of people listening that are like, oh, electric cars are soulless. They're junk out with nothing to do with them. We're talking with a legit car dude here. So he owned a twin turbo RX seven. That's the most finicky beautiful car that existed in that period 
and I wor- I did work to it to make it even faster. There it was o- it was almost unsafe <laughs> how, how fast it was. I let my dad drive it once, and my dad was like, you know, from the fifties, muscle cars and everything. He got out of it because I'm never driving that thing again. It's not, it's not safe. <laughs> nice. He like almost nice. lost it in a turn. He just gave it a little bit too much, and the whole back end kicked out. Like that 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 car was brutally. Used. That nice. was much faster than my Boxster. Um, oh yeah, you know, well, yeah, and, uh, definitely. Yeah. Well, now, but you're excited about electric trucks, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's one of the things that I'd love to have the listeners understand. I think a lot of people have this 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 impression that you know electric cars are for the the greenies, the um, tree huggers, you know, people eating granola with their open toed sandals, you know, like, and and that's not just the case. I mean, sure, a lot there's a lot of people that you know maybe have that lifestyle. And there's nothing wrong with that lifestyle. I'm not denigrating it, you know. Um, uh, but the fact of the matter is. There's a lot of in car enthusiasts that love electric vehicles too, like myself. You know, I mean, the performance is outstanding. The driving experience is great, um, and I'm also a truck guy. I've had I've had a pickup truck on my driveway probably for at least 25 years consistently. Um, so you know, I I like trucks too. So I'm really looking forward to uh, these new uh, entries that are going to be coming soon. We're going to be getting electric pickup trucks. Cool. So what? kind of prompted this is I know you guys reported on it on the 12th but it you know sometimes things percolate for us and we kind of started hearing about all the stuff about Lordstown Motors kind of on Monday and it prompted a conversation in our chat at work and um we were talking about things and it kind of brought up the topic of electric pickups in general. And our boss, John Neff, he kind of posted this really long list of the electric pickup trucks that are supposed to be on the way. And, and I didn't realize it was that long of a list. I'll be I honest. I mean, that. I, it's, I, it's mean I knew, I knew a fair amount, but I mean, this there's more me. than that. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. That's not a complete list. <laughs> So. Well, let's let's do it. Let's do a quick rundown. Let's talk about this list here a little bit, because um, um, if you go to Inside EVs, um, the list is there. We'll have a link when we put this up um, for our uh, for our article at Motor One. We'll drop a link when it goes up on YouTube as well. Um, full list of trucks that are coming both in the near term and a little little bit further into the future. Um, we'll start. We won't be able to talk in depth about all, all of these by any means, but we'll start with the probably the one that really kicked it all off the Tesla Cybertruck. That's still supposed to be coming. Is it, is it in production time at the end of this year or is it now next year? But I mean, it's, it's most likely going to make it, isn't it? This vehicle is going to see production, but it's on Musk time. So, you know, we, <laughs> we, 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 you know, it's hard to really predict exactly what that means. Um, I do believe that at some point in 2021, they will have, some version of it made pre-production, maybe even early production. Tesla usually, when they when they introduce a new vehicle, you usually get like a couple hundred of them, like in a, in a three or four month period, and before production really ramps up, because they they really push the envelope. Unlike any of the you know legacy OEM makers, they begin making cars before they really have any right to. You know, when the <laughs> the car is still like in beta form, but you know what? It hasn't hurt them. And their customers love it. So I would imagine at some point at the end of this year, we're probably going to see some sort of um, early production models being made. Um, now, granted, we haven't even seen the final production version yet. That's not the production version. Right. It's supposed to look very close to that. And Musk keeps tweeting like, it's coming in two weeks. It's coming. In, you know, the final version, we're <laughs> locked in. You're going to get it. And, um, and, and six and, months goes by and it's it, like, it, it's coming it, in a couple of weeks. Exactly. So, yeah. so, you know, that's Musk time, but we, you know, w- we expect at some point soon, hopefully in the next few weeks, even to see the locked in final production version of it. Now I have a deposit on uh, a Cybertruck um, on the, uh, the middle grade one, the, uh, the, the uh, all wheel drive version that starts at 49, nine, that goes about 400, uh, about 300 miles per charge. Um, and, you know, I, I, I fully intend on going through with it unless at the time it's available, there's another truck available um, that I prefer that I can afford. I don't think that's going to be the case. So I do expect to, to, to take delivery of a Cybertruck when my turn comes. Um, and that's when I'll get rid of my Toyota Tacoma and, and I'll outfit this thing with a plow because that's one of the reasons why I, I have a pickup truck. I have some properties that I need to plow in the winter and... Um, 
this thing will be my plow, my plow vehicle. And to be clear for anyone who's not watching our YouTube, uh, which obviously has the images, we're looking at some of the images that Tesla released of the Cybertruck. And the thing is, as far as we understand it, the lighting needs to change to be EPA, or not EPA, to be um, government mandated. Also, it doesn't have mirrors, which doesn't really work. Um, so there are gonna need to be some changes. It's Like Tom said, it's probably gonna look very similar to this, but not identical. Is and it's going to be, and I think it's also going to be a little bit smaller, isn't it? I've, I've heard that it's going to be probably a little smaller. We hear that it's going to be three percent smaller, but no, that's not. We much. hear a lot of things, you know, <laughs> from you know, uh, you know. So take everything with a grain of salt until we get the specs. But yeah, that's what we hear. Approximately three percent smaller. And Tom, I, I got to ask. I mean, do you think it's fair to say that uh, when Tesla debuted the Cybertruck here in its in its prototype form? Was that an event that really kind of woke up, especially the OEMs in Detroit, if not a lot of other brands, to say, holy crap, they're going to beat us to the punch in the biggest automotive market in America. We need to do something and do something now. Yeah. So I got a little story about the introduction, if, if we have an, a couple extra yeah. minutes. Sure. Go ahead. Um, so I was in China um, in a, with a small pool of, of automotive reporters interviewing um, a high level manager of NEO, the electric car company NEO. Mm -hmm. And w when this was debuting, because there's a 12 hour difference, that was, you know, I forget what, what time it was. It was nine o'clock at night, I guess, in the US. It was in the evening, for sure. In the yeah. evening. And so it was, it was nine or 10 o'clock in the afternoon, in, in, you know, in, in China. And, uh, and I couldn't miss the debut of this thing because nobody knew what it looked like. So I had my cell phone out and I'm, I'm kind of watching it. And, we, you know, we're taking questions, interviewing the, the, this uh, this this senior manager and it, like I said, there's only like ten of us in the room, so it was hard for me to hide. But I had to see this, you know. And um, so they 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 sh the thing rolls out on the stage, and I'm like, this is a joke. You know, this is <laughs> this isn't what they're you know what like. I guess they're going to show us like some kind of wild concept, and then they're going to roll out the real thing because I'm not listening. I'm just watching. And as he's going and going, I'm like that's the cyber truck. So I like reached over and I showed some of my colleagues and every, like we like had to stop the interview. We're like, excuse me for one oh, second. Man. I know this before, but we have, we just have to talk about this for a minute. It was kind of rude, but uh, it had to be done. And, um, and I think I, I talk about the different stages of cyber truck. Everybody, I think when it initially came out said, Oh my God, like they, they're kidding. Like it's a joke. It's a joke that like who the hell would buy that? And then a little bit later, they're like, you know, it's not that bad. I see, you know, where he's going with this. And it's kind of cool and, and, and you know, kind of really futuristic. And then, the, you know, a little bit later, it's, you know, I, I really like that. And then it's you're on the website putting your deposit down. And, and I found a, a lot of people, maybe not you guys, but a lot of people in the circles I travel in um, with that, that are electric vehicle fans mirrored that same experience that were like, they were like, oh, my God, at first. And a week later, they had their $100 deposit down on, on, on the vehicle. I When I first saw it, I didn't think there was a chance in hell that I would actually put a deposit on it. I'm telling you the truth. But like a week or two later, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the specs and I'm like, this thing's pretty cool, you know, and, and I think I want one. So I went through all of those stages except the deposit. I never got yeah. around to the deposit because I thought, you know what, I, I'm just not, I'm not that interested in spending that much money, even though I think the uh, the entry level Cybertruck at its price, I think is is a great, great vehicle for the price, provided it, it meets everything that Musk says it's going to. But yeah, I went through all the same yeah. stages and I think yeah. you're right, a lot of people did. Listen, the middle grade one that I'm going for, the, the entry level one's only rear wheel drive. I, I can't get a pickup truck that's rear wheel drive. The the middle grade one that I'm going for is the all wheel drive version. It's forty nine nine. Now, guys, you know what pickup trucks cost. Yeah. You know, go, go out to the lots. I look at them. I told you I, I go to the dealerships all the time. I do dealership training. I'm, I'm on the lots. I always look at the full, the F-150s, the Silverados. Damn things are like seventy five thousand yep. dollars when you when you load them up. Fifty grand isn't isn't a big deal for a truck. Isn't a big deal at all for a truck. So, you know, and they, you know, it comes, there's not going to be a whole lot of options for it. You could pay the 10 grand for full self-driving, which I wouldn't get, but you know, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty well, you know, outfitted Tesla vehicles just with their base price. So, you know, we'll see. 
So moving on to the next one, we've got the Rivian pickup truck. And so, Tom, I, you are much more ensconced in the EV world than I am. And here is my thing. I, so Rivian to me exists. They're not vaporware. They're not the real thing. To, in my mind, they're kind of somewhere in the middle. And am I wrong? It's just that there's so much hype around them, but yet I've never seen a product. As far as I know, is there a production vehicle? Like, is there, am I just discounting them too much? Am I, am I biased? Like, to, tell me what's going on here. So, um, you know, until they make the vehicles and sell them, they're not real. So I understand where you're, where you're coming from with, with, with that. But I uh, guess they do have uh, not production intent vehicles because we're, they're not at that stage yet. You know, you'd, you'd get to that stage, you know, um, you know, right before production, which they're getting close to. And you know what? They might right. even have, late they might even have production. Or something 2021, yeah. late 2021, something like that. They're on that borderline now. They might actually have production intent vehicles, but they've had fully functioning prototypes for a long time now. And I'll tell you what really gave me the, um, made, impressed me by Rivian. When they had their coming out party, it was in 2018 at the um, LA Auto Show. Mm -hmm. And um, God, was it 2019? Mm -hmm. I don't know, 2019 or 2018. I think, I think it was 18. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, COVID just threw off my life timeline. I, <laughs> like I, all I, of I, us. I, yeah. Um, when, so they had this coming out party. I got an invitation and they had the truck there, a working truck. Here, here's our vehicle from day one, before anybody even knew anything about the vehicle. The, here you go. Here's our truck. And that rarely happens. And that made me step back and say, these, these guys might be serious because this looks like I could just drive it home. It's, a, it's not a concept. It doesn't have wild things that all have to change. This is like what you see in that picture. I saw the day they launched it and they let us play, touch it, open up the trunk, you know, play, play with the bed and everything. We couldn't sit in them yet, but um, like, so that gave me reason to believe that they're serious. And, you know, we follow this, com this company closely. Oh, They've yeah. released does so many videos. I don't know if you go online of, of them doing their validation testing, off-road driving. This thing's for real, okay? This I is as real as the Cybertruck. I'm telling you. This the, So I, I have no absolutely no concerns about whether this thing is going to come to production. Unlike 90% of the other trucks we're probably going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, you know, Rivian is for real. And I think that, I think they're going to do really well with this. And even, they might even do better with the R1 S, which is their SUV, which mm -hmm. is I've seen really, that. really cool. I mean, that, that really, really looks cool. And the, and the Rivian, I mean, it's, it's not supposed to be the like the on road performance beast of the cyber truck, but I mean it's it's not going to be mild either, is it? No, not at all. I mean it. Uh, it uh, the zero to sixty. I know I listed some of the things here. No, I don't have the zero to sixty for that. But don't it's, worry about it. Yeah, just three hundred three hundred mile range out of the box with a ten thousand dollar option for a larger battery pack that will go more than four hundred miles. Um, it's got the four in wheel motors. With end of each wheel has its own single speed gearbox and end motor can do those tank turns, which kind of look cool, but I don't know how practical it is to really do that with a vehicle can literally just spin in place without without uh, moving because they could have each wheel go, you know, the, the wheels on each side spin in opposite directions. So it'll literally just spin in circles. I mean, you'll shred your tires, sure. but you know, um, it looks cool. It'll make a good YouTube video. Um, <laughs> so, you know, th there, it starts at like 67 and change. You do get the federal tax credit. So, you know, now you're down to 60,000 plus your, I mean, you could load it up to a hundred grand. If you get, they have all kind of crazy options. R they have like a full, um, uh, kitchen that rolls out of the I've tent, the that. center I've tunnel. That. And, yeah. and, and that's probably what we, we should talk about really briefly is, they have this really innovative feature on it where there's this center storage tunnel that's underneath the rear seats. And it's huge. Like, you know, any of us could fit in there. You know, we're, we're not small guys. Um, uh, and you can Thanks, store tons, tons of cargo there. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, that's one of the things that I really like about this electrification that we're going through with cars and trucks. We're seeing innovation that we haven't seen in the traditional vehicles. It's just like the traditional OEMs just keep 
um, gradually improving their vehicles, their pickup trucks. Every generation is a little bit better. It's more fuel efficient. It can haul a little bit more. The interior is nicer, but we don't get these like, I mean, the biggest thing is like what GM's like multi-folding um, real tailgate. Like, oh, wow, look at what we did. You know, we reinvented the tailgate. Look at what. Sorry. Look at what the electric vehicle <laughs> companies are doing. They're like doing crazy stuff, like with huge front trunks and, uh, you know, sliding out um, uh, beds in the back and as kitchen. You could you could order your truck with a with a portable kitchen. Like so that's what I like about what's happening with these with this electrification is we're seeing innovation that we haven't seen before. So speaking of the established automakers, though, how about the GMC Hummer EV? which we're pretty certain this is going to come. I mean, I mean yeah, it's, it's, it's going to come out. It's, it's I, from GMC. Yeah. They finally got, uh, I mean, they finally got prototypes out there. I mean, um, do you think we're wrong here, Tom? Like LeBron has kind of driven one out of his garage into his driveway. It, there's no way this isn't going to happen, right? No, th- 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 this is absolutely happening. Um, yeah. These are the three. We started off with the big three, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, the, the Cybertruck, Rivian, and the Hummer EV. We know we're getting these vehicles and we're getting them like within a year. Okay. So, you know, the, these three vehicles are in my, in my mind are solid and we're getting them. We're going to then talk about a lot that, you know, who knows, but we're gonna yeah, talk about one more that it, I think we're going to get yeah. Uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah. But this, this, the, the, uh, I love the Hummer EV. A lot of people talked about, well, it's $112,000. It's crazy. Well, what did the original H1 cost when it came out? It was, it was over a yeah. hundred grand. Yeah. You know, and, and people bought that. And uh, this is just, you know, it, this is like uber cool. I, I, I love it. I love the, the camera system under the vehicle. So you could see like the rocks you're going over and things like that. Um, I think this is going to sell well. I know it's expensive, but there's a lot of people with enough coin to, to, to you know, buy one of these. And, well, it's expensive to start, but... For better no, it's, or worse, it's still, GMC ex- has- it's still expensive later on. I mean, I mean, let's not let's. It's still eighty grand in its in its base form, right? In twenty twenty five, when it gets here, yeah. yeah even yeah. even the base I form is is eighty grand. You do get the federal tax credit, net knocks off seventy five hundred dollars. Um, and there's other incentives in other states too that that can knock off two thousand more. In my state of New Jersey, completely uh, electric vehicles are sales tax exempt. So now that's, that's a $5,000 sure. savings on an $8,000 car. Yeah, it's a $7,000 savings. savings on a $100,000 car. So, you know, the, these things start to add up. And there's other incentives, too, that you get. Like, I get discounted easy pass when I drive my electric car. So, I mean, I, I mean, listen, you buy a $120,000 car. You're not looking at nickel and dime in your easy pass that often. But, uh, you know, the, 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 these do – there are incentives that, that do help take the – take the edge off of uh, some of these uh, higher end electric vehicles. And once I got past the sticker shock, because when that initially came out, I was like, what the hell is GMC thinking? This is, this is a ridiculous step, but no, you're, you're right. The original Hummer, the H one was very pricey. It was an insanely capable off-roader. This one looks like it's going to have some legit good off-road capability along with all the luxury it's a halo vehicle i mean you have to think of it as a halo vehicle not as a pickup truck that every person's going to go out and buy yeah we'll i don't know what shed. they're i don't know what they're paying lebron to you know to sponsor it essentially but the fact that he's appeared in so many vehicles and they must be paying him millions i would have to assume that they're serious about this because they wouldn't do it otherwise well, let's talk yeah. about some other OEMs um, because we're we're getting a little short on time. Um, let, oh. I mean, we got to we got to jump next to the EVF one hundred and fifty, right? Okay, I was going to talk about one. Can we talk about one real quick that we're not sure about? Okay, is that okay? Okay, well, we, and then we'll get to we'll get to one hundred and fifty. Yep, yeah, we'll do that one next. Probably. Do it, Bruce. Okay, hold on. What do we got? So we're going to be talking about the Lordstown Motors Endurance, uh, and it's yeah. kind of the whole reason that we're here. Yeah, in, we got in a, a way. We got to talk about that. Um, so a it's a Chevy called- Silverado. Look at that. <laughs> it kind really, of is. It's, really, it's not. But I mean, come on. We don't know how much of it is it. So there was a company called what Hindenburg Research. Is that their mm-hmm. correct name? Hindenburg. Hindenburg Research. Yes, they put out a report last week 
basically saying that everything that Lordstown Motors is doing is a fraud. Like that's not us saying it. No, just, just, just to be clear, that's not they, us saying it. They, let me put it this way: they were, they put forward a lot of questions about what this company is doing and whether they could actually build a vehicle. Mm-hmm. And, and and they also questioned their deposits because they, they uh, Lordstown well, had yes. said they had a hundred thousand dollar pre orders, and you know Hindenburg said that's not true, and I think Lordstown's backing off on that a little. And like, well, we have interest from a hundred thousand, something like that. You know, it's different than deposits and orders. So yeah. Do you have any opinion on this, Tom? Like, well, this, is one of the, this is one of the companies that, um, and you know, I don't mean to, you know, um, make myself sound really smart. Two companies that I really, from the beginning had a lot of concerns with that. And that was Nicola and, and Lordstown. Um, and, and, you know, Nicola, already gone. Yeah, N- N- Nicola, and you know who sank them was Hindenburg. Yes. Hindenburg Research, the same company now that did a report on Lordstown. N- Hindenburg's report was the beginning of the end for Trevor Milton, the CEO of, of uh, Nicola. And now this is coming out with this. But the one thing I will say that, you know, we can say that isn't uh, speculation is the, f- the first Lordstown endurance pickup truck that was actually going to be road tested, that went out on the road to drive. This was about three weeks ago, burned up within 15 minutes of being on the road. (laughs) Went up in flames and completely burned. And it was the first time that the company actually brought a vehicle out onto public roads. And they launched this though, like midway through last year, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, also had an IPO, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Like, well, uh, yeah, I don't follow the 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 investing part of these companies. To be honest with you, there's so many of them with SPACs. I, I, I'm I stay away from that. But if you do remember, the one thing that they got a lot of news coverage from was last year, President Trump went to their factory, Lordstown factory, because what happened was GM had announced they were closing the Lordstown factory. Yep. And Trump threw a salvo at Barra and was like, you know, you can't do this. You know, I promise. a long people. time northeastern Ohioan and now in northwestern Ohio. And trust me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know, yeah. and, you know, you're, yeah. you know, so Trump was very unhappy because he promised he was going to retain manufacturing jobs. And here was GM cutting whatever thousands of jobs. So, you know, it's it, it seemed like the Trump administration somehow got involved and put, you know, and this is speculation kind of put pressure on GM to do something with this factory. And then all of a sudden we found out, oh, they sold it to Lordstown Motors or it was Workhorse Group at the time mm-hmm. for like really, really cheap, like nothing. And, you know, we're going to bring jobs back to America. And uh, Vice President Pence went to the the big, uh, they had this big like Lordstown Motors, yep. you know, unveiling and they had yes, the truck and everything. Yep. And it looked like a political stump for me. The, the, it, it was a we, political rally. It really, we learned political. nothing about the truck. You know, yep. it was it was a joke. You know, and and uh, and you know that just further, like you know, threw the fuel on my fire. That hey, there's something something not right here. You know, you know, you, you would think they would take this opportunity to to show off the truck and show how great it is and how we're bringing jobs. We're going to make this truck and let people drive it and everything. No, it was just kind of sitting in the background. We. And they gave us no details about the truck. So, yep, I remember know. that. I remember yeah. that. In fact, I think I, I think I wrote about the the, the debut. I it was like you did write that story, It, it yeah. was like, what exactly debuted here? Um, yeah. Is Lordstown <laughs> Motors planning to try to run for office, or are they trying <laughs> to build a truck? Yeah, it's, it, that's that's how it came oh. across to everybody. It was it was. I viewed it as an embarrassment. So. Well, let me let let me jump it back here um, to GM. GM's crosstown rival Ford. We'll we'll touch on the F one fifty here really quick because oh you actually, got it or do you want me to? I, I, I've got I've the got, photo up. Oh, you you've got a photo. Okay, why I, don't you go ahead and go ahead and put it up because I had a photo. There's too, a photo sure. of the prototype. Well, the the prototype, yeah, the prototype. But we recently caught. I'll go ahead and put this one up. Uh, we recently oh, good caught man. Yeah. some some spy photos. And uh, that, yeah. and and this is supposed to be the the F one fifty EV in production form. So I mean, obviously, I mean it's 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 gonna it's gonna come to production. I mean, I don't think there's any question about that. It's just a question of when and how much different it's gonna look. And I I found these spy photos rather comical because they've got the whole truck wrapped, and we know Ford isn't gonna change the entire truck. 
Uh, the grill's going to be different. The, the, grill, light, the, yeah. the lights are going to be a little different, but they've got the whole truck wrapped in camo, almost like, I, I mean, they're doing this for attention. I think, I think they have to be doing it for attention. Tom, I mean, what do you, what do you, do you, what do you know about the, uh, the EVF 150 here? So we really don't know a lot about before it's been really quiet with that. Um, you know, the, some of the things we heard is that they said it's going to have an enormous frunk, like to store stuff in the front, a giant you put shrimp, shrimp in it? area. Yeah, well, you know, you oh, put, don't get me started on that. Put a lot of shrimp oh my in God. there. You can put a lot of shrimp in there. Did you just um, bring up the shrimp from the, the Mustang Mach E? You know, I did. I'll find that picture real quick. Oh my God. Okay, sorry, sorry, Tom. Keep going. Yeah. So you um, touched the nerve. That's funny. So yeah, that, we heard this going to have an enormous. It's going to have dual motors, so you know, all wheel drive. Um, and that we that Ford had said that it's going to be the most powerful most capable F-150 ever made. So, you know, uh, you know, th- th- those are strong words. So, uh, you know, that's really all we know about it, you know, and, uh, er- you know, earliest would be end of 2022 um, for availability. But uh, so I, still, listen, still got I wish that was available now. I would probably, I, I, there's a good chance I might get that if it was reasonably priced um, over the Cybertruck. I'm just well, kind of getting, I have a deposit on the Cybertruck because I want an electric truck. And it's the first one. I can't really afford the Rivian. You know, if I outfitted it in the trim I wanted, it'd be a hundred grand. And mm-hmm. That's too much. But I, 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 I'm, I'm looking forward to this for well, has fleets. It, for fleets, it's going to do fantastic, in my opinion. I think it'll do good for fleets also. And a Ford, if you're listening and you want to make a performance variant of the F-150, there has never been a better chance to bring back the Lightning. Speaking yeah. as a, as an old SVT guy, yeah. never been a better opportunity to bring back the Ford F-150 Lightning because now it. you have it in a full electric vehicle. And if it's going to be the fastest, most powerful you've ever done, no brainer, Ford. I agree. You're, you're, so just real quick. For any of our YouTube watchers who are unsure what I was referring to, Ford, for some reason, and I want to be the (laughs) member of the marketing team this day, put out an image of the Mach-E's frunk where they um, filled it with Where they filled it with, yes. Hold on one second. I I mean, I'm, I'm a Mustang guy. I'm an electric guy, and I've been warming up to the Maki. I have to say, I've been warming up to the Maki. Well, I've been warming up to the Maki being called Mustang. Mm-hmm. But when I saw this, uh, look, look at this. <laughs> and I want you to say very proudly if you search uh, Maki shrimp, motor one is the first. Uh, that's uh, right, that baby. You get on Google because I had top one, of the pops on Maki shrimp. I had one hell of an op ed on that. Because here's Ford trying to evoke the Mustang spirit and image. And it's speaking as somebody who's been to a hell of a lot of Mustang events over the years. I can guarantee you I've never seen anybody open up a trunk in their Mustang and be like, come get some shrimp, everybody. That's not what happens at, at car events. It's not what happens. Now, they also had another picture with chicken wings. You know what, and, Smith? And, and you know what? I'd, I'd rather second, have the shrimp. I will have that image available we, we don't, to we don't, you. We don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. Yes, we the, do. The, sh- the shrimp yes, is at least do. easier to clean up, you know? And so it has I, Buffalo Wild Wings sponsorship for whatever reason. Oh, Ford was so desperate. It's like, just let the mach eat sell itself. I, it thing looks it looks cool. It it drives cool. Just, oh. There you go. You don't oh, need God, you don't, wings. You don't need this. I, I could use some wings now, though. Damn it. I wish I mean, you they guys do look had, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, but in the in the, you're gonna eat them out of a, the, the front of a car. <laughs> I wish I knew you guys were gonna tee this up. Because, I didn't even know it. Bruce is blindsiding me. He's he's on my he's picking on my weak spot here. Bruce, and let me tell you why. Ford didn't come up with the idea of putting shrimp in the frunk. You're lying. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and I could have found the picture if I'd have known this was coming. Um, back in, I had a BMW i3 back in okay. 2014, and I actually started a Facebook group on for Facebook, the BMW i3 Facebook group. Uh-huh. We had thousands of members. One of the good members and one of my friends, Peter Norby, lives in California. When he got his i3, and the i3 had a little frunk, it was like a third of the size of that, you know, so it wasn't this giant thing with shrimp. He filled it with ice, 
and put shrimp cocktail on top of it and took pictures of it. And it's online and, you know, it's, you can find that. So Ford copied my friend Peter. Oh, my God. Ford, so not a, only was a it a bad fail. idea, but it was a stolen bad idea. Double Ford. fail. So, so, yeah. So I I, I bet you, uh, Chris, I bet you didn't think that I uh, I would come up with an uh, an older picture of, uh, of somebody. And I'll, I'll send that to you guys. But, yeah, he had a, he had a get together and he filled it up and he just for fun. But it's so small the i the i three sprunk it what you know you, you, you they probably probably put like two dozen shrimp in it and it was and it was filled but um yeah, and it's Ford an easy easy cleanup idea. exactly now, is it is it bad for me to say that I could actually see the BMW people doing that <laughs> <laughs> well send your you send know, your hate mail to podcast at motor one dot com well you know the i three folks we considered ourselves outcasts like the BMW faithful didn't didn't really embrace us. Cause it really is an unconventionally looking vehicle. So, you know, we, we weren't the typical BMW, uh, you know, people. So, you know, it was, uh, yeah, I don't know if you, you shouldn't hate on us as much as maybe you hate on some of the other, uh, BMW owners. Oh, I don't hate on anybody <laughs> except the Pontiac Grand Am people. I hate those. People. Ooh, <laughs> Sorry. That's like everyone in my high school. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They've moved on and they realize just how ridiculous those Grand Am people are. So, Hot take. Okay, we let's 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 we got a little derailed. It's Bruce's fault. Okay. Let's do it. Let's just do a quick rundown of some trucks that are also supposedly out there. But come on, is it really going to happen? You know. Right. So super quick, I just want to mention the canoe, which we just saw last week, I believe. Um, I'll be popping up a picture of it here. Um, now, in my opinion, if yep. you're going to make an electric truck, this is how it should look. I mean, it looks goofy, but it only looks goofy because we've been used to seeing pickup trucks a certain way for a certain amount of time. They have to have these big, uh, big hoods so you can put your big VH and your big diesels in there. With electric, you don't need any of that. So, I mean, this is, I think, a great idea of rethinking the concept. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, you, you know, and I, I don't know if you guys have seen the functionality of this, the things that it does, the, how the front opens up. And not only is there a trunk in there, but it slides out to be a table. And there's six power outlets and uh, the, the tailgate in the back f slides way out so you can fit a four by eight sheet of plywood between the wheel wells. I mean, this, this, this thing is really cool. Uh, and if there were, if all of the electric pickup trucks that are proposed were available today and they were relatively similarly priced. I, I, th I honestly think I would take this. I really like it. I love how the interior cabin space is going to be so big. You know, look at that windshield. It goes all the way out there. You're going to have so much room in there because it use it utilizes the, the, the form of the truck. The fact that it doesn't need a hood. Um, plus it looks, it looks like it should be driving on the moon. So who doesn't want a moon vehicle? So, I, Tom, I know, that's right? where I'm going to have to disagree with you is in the <laughs> interior room bit. Yeah. So here is an image, and mm -hmm. you can see how massive that dashboard is. Mm -hmm. It is it is every bit as large as the passenger space, honestly. Like, but, but, and I know there are images that show, like, storage space in there, but it's gargantuan. But now thinking outside the box here, okay, and this is completely mm -hmm. hypothetical. I've never done anything like this in my life. Mm -hmm. If you were driving and let's say you wanted to, I don't know, moon somebody that was in front of you, <laughs> there is enough space in that truck to climb, kind of wiggle back around behind the wheel. You, you're, you're, you're actually facing backwards <laughs> in, the, in the vehicle. You're still holding onto the wheel, so you're still safe. You're holding on to the wheel and you can you can press the cheeks right up into the windshield and let the people in front of you know that they need to go faster. You're not wrong. And just real quick outside so, the box here. No, anyone who has listened to this show knows that we love <laughs> weird old press photos. So I want to show you a man who first off. So the Jeep FC forward control, which was cab over engine is kind of sort of seems to be the design inspiration for this vehicle. Mm -hmm. But I want you to tell me, have you ever seen a man more desiring of a shot of whiskey than the man in this press photo? <laughs> <laughs> Just look he's, at it. He's got his hat on. He's got his flannel shirt on. That man wants to go home and he wants some 
some Jack he, Daniels. He almost has the whiskey face right now, if you yeah. think about it. Yeah, I don't think he wants to go home, Chris. I think he left the house. <laughs> he just had a fight with his wife, and he's heading to the bar. <laughs> In any vehicle he can find. Uh-oh. Oh, good stuff. Uh-oh. Bruce got so excited that he ejected himself from the podcast. He'll be back. He'll be back. So while Bruce comes back to the podcast, um, Tom, how about we just go through like like really quick? Because we've got um we've got mm-hmm. Bollinger that we didn't talk about, right? Right. We've got yeah. Bollinger. Um that, that seems like it's gonna be there, but then you, know, you think oh they well, seemed okay. like they were gonna be there for a while though. And and one thing I'll give credit for, they also came out with working concepts. They brought them to all the trade shows. I sat in the Bollinger pickup oh, really? truck. I, I didn't yeah, realize that they ever got that far. Oh, in yeah, the- yeah, yeah. I sat in the B2. Um, I mean, the thing looks like the, the three of us made it in our garage with like a rivet <laughs> gun and, and welders. Like, you know, like there's no – the edges are all like riveted together and everything. I mean, but which is kind of cool. My thinking – and it's expensive. It's uh, $125,000. And only goes 200 miles per, uh, per charge because it's a big, heavy, inefficient vehicle. My thought on Bollinger was at the time because they've been they've been out there for a while now. You know, Bollinger they they mm-hmm. came out with their concept years ago. Was that they had to get to market before the big boys did, and and they're not. So while I don't think they're vaporware, I think they really had you know a vehicle that they could have produced. Um, they, maybe they ran short of funding. Maybe they may, may, for whatever reason, it got dragged out longer than they were hoping to. And now they're going to get swamped by the big guys. That's just my opinion. Uh, if they could have brought this thing to market before Tesla and Rivian and, you know, the, the GM, GM came out with the Hummer. I mean, it's the same price as the Hum, as the, as the Humvee, you know, like, you know, it's, 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 it's not cheap and they yeah. don't really have any reputation to fall back on either, you know? Right. Dealer no. network service, you know, warranty, you got to worry about, are they going to be around in five years? Nobody has to worry about if GM is going to be there to service their, the, you know, the Hummer in a couple of years. Um, so mm-hmm. it's, t- I, I, they're nice guys. I met them. I talked to them. The vehicle was real, was really kind of cool, but I think the fact that it's taken them so long to actually get this thing out there is going to be the, the thing that brings them down. Well, Quick, uh, just a, let's do a, just a quick rundown of a few more here. Just just give us like a quick hot take here on uh, on likelihood of these coming to market here. Hercules Alpha. <sighs> Very low. <laughs> that, okay. I think that says it all. Very low one for you. Um, yeah. The the Alpha Wolf, which is a different vehicle despite its yeah. similar name. I'm, I'm going to share this image because I really yeah. dig this thing. Yeah. Oh, it's incredibly attractive. It's just I wonder about the company. You know, they've come out with three different concepts and one of the concepts, they have two versions of it. So they mm-hmm. actually have come out with four different vehicles now, none of which are anything more than CGI. Correct. Uh, right, right. These are and I actually contacted the uh, uh, the company's PR team. Yeah, it's it's pure. It's just pure CGI right now. Yeah. And, uh, 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 you know, a friend of mine reached out to the company to interview them about this vehicle and uh, was denied. Uh, no, oh, wow. we're, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not doing that right now. Uh, you know, if, if, you know, if, if you're, if you're really, you know, if you're real and, 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 and you want to move things forward, um, you know, you talk to the press. So mm-hmm. um, I yeah. give them, uh, I, I'm going to put that under the Hercules, the Hercules alpha, as far as probability of coming, which is a shame because guys, isn't that cool? It looks like an A. Oh, it looks fantastic. Especially retro. there are other vehicles. It has this yeah. kind of vintage retro modern. And, I mean, in my mind, yeah. if, if you want to appeal to like the current, like dedicated, I love my truck buyer, that's it. I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, that's a classic design. It's a small truck, but yeah. really it's what trucks used to be. Mm-hmm. It's just a small single cab, yeah. two seats yeah. inside, small bed in the back. But it looks aggressive. It looks ready to crawl over just about anything. It looks I, I, I super agree. Cool, but they, I, I agree. I, they, yeah. It you know may not look good, but or may not look good for them coming to market. But we're pulling for you. Oh yeah, I would. I, I see. Don't, don't get me wrong. I wish all of these companies would bring the competition is fantastic for everyone. And a lot of these electric pickup trucks that probably will never make it, they all have their own little niche that none of them are really exactly the same. So there would be room for them to make it. But 
what gets me down on them is if they're not completely transparent, if we can't, as Inside EVs and other people, can't reach out to them, interview their people, ask them tough questions. If they're not showing us working prototypes, I can't spend time, you know, saying, yeah, yeah these, this company looks real to me. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. One last quick one, the Fisker Alaska <laughs> from the company that still has a karma. Yeah, I I, 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 I I like the Fisker Ocean. Um, uh, that's the, that's a small uh, SUV which is actually coming out first. Um, that one is supposedly to it's supposed to begin production. I think sometime at the end of this year. Uh, the Fisker has a contract with uh, Magna to to build it for them. And the the Ocean is an SUV which I I really like. It kind of has like a Range Rover vibe. Um, and it seems like, you know, the price point he's bringing it at and the features it's going to have is really cool. Now that now the, 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 the pickup truck is, is the next vehicle. So, you know, okay, show us that you can make the ocean first and show us that you're real before I get excited about your pickup truck. I like Fisker's designs. I always have, he's a fantastic designer. I don't, I don't know if he has it, what takes to run the entire company though. You know, um, and, you know, it, it, so far, it doesn't seem like that's been his wheelhouse. His wheelhouse is design, and he's great at design. Uh, but let's see. Let's see if he brings the ocean to market first. If he does, I'll uh, then I'll say, look, I think this is coming. I give this a little bit higher of a chance than the last two we talked about, um, because I know, you know, Fisker does, you know, the, the ocean is is slowly moving forward, but it is moving forward. And it, and they're they're signing contracts for with suppliers and and um, and production. So it looks like he's going to bring that to market. And if he does, then, you know, then maybe the Alaska will will make it. But for now, it's it's kind of like, you know, that's back burner. That's, you know, I I give it maybe a 30 percent chance of, of making it. Okay, that's, well, that's entirely fair. And and I mean, there are certainly more electric trucks in the works than, like we said, even the, what we're looking than, at here. Than we, than we realize. Yeah. And there's and there's still more out there. I mean, these are the ones that uh, that are I think are worthy of attention at this point. We're going to talk more actually about trucks and kind of truck culture and take maybe a little bit deeper dive into the general scene here in a bit. Um, Bruce, let's take a little bit of a, an intermission here because we have something special happening next week that we're going to invite the viewers to uh, to sort of participate in. Yeah, so we are going to be talking to Ted Ryan, and he is an archivist at Ford, which means he has access to, you know, kind of all their documents, brochures, images, stuff like that. Our specific topic is going to be Bronco, just because that's kind of the biggest, newest model that's going to be com- uh, going to be coming, and it's not necessarily – first generation Bronco, last generation Bronco. If you have any questions about Bronco in general, send them to us and we will kind of forward them to him. And it's assuming you send them to us within enough time, you know, maybe we will get those questions answered. We've also asked him. So between the end of the ranch era, which I believe was in kind of mid ish sixties and the new Maverick, Ford hasn't had a unibody pickup in the United States. And we asked him to kind of look into whether or not there was ever a plan to do another one. Um, And I don't know that yet because he's been researching. So, you know, maybe we'll have some sort of scoop about that. So that's that's a reason to listen next week. Yeah, yeah, very good. I know, um, you know, in my days back at Ford, oh gosh, way back in the day, uh, I would occasionally see some Falcon Utes around Dearborn. I mean, obviously, oh, really. Um, I mean, obviously, Ford with Australia and Ford. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's all connected. Um, but I, I mean, I was stoked to see him on the road. It's like, yes, this is, you know, th- that's kind of the truck that I would like, uh, something mm-hmm. car based. I don't necessarily need something big body on frame, uh, you know, to to go hog wild with. So. I'm really excited about talking to him. Oh, and, I'm super. Yeah. yeah. If you're, so, and, yeah the if, main topic is going to be Bronco, but and send us questions about that. But we kind of hope to, you know, I don't I, I honestly don't know. Maybe Ford in the late 80s, sometimes during the 90s, considered bringing a unibody pickup back to the U.S. Hopefully we'll learn something about that. I don't know. Hopefully we'll get a big scoop out of this. I mean, probably not, but it doesn't mean well, that maybe. Bruce and I, are, I it doesn't mean that we're not going to try. And yeah. if so, if you have any questions, podcast at motor1.com is the That's email. Right. 
You could also leave your questions in the comments. Every Friday, we post up an article at motor1.com mm-hmm. talking about the podcast. You can leave comments for us at YouTube where you can, uh, where you can follow us at YouTube. The podcast is also at Spotify, Google, Apple, the whole shot. Yep. Um, we've, we're gone a little bit long here, but we need to do a little, a more little bit. Yeah. We want to talk about electric pickups in general, and this is going to be brief. This is going to be a 10, 15 minute conversation, but, but we, it's, it's one that we need to have. Absolutely. We want to talk about our own opinions about electric pickups and whether or not there's a future there, what the future is for them, where they're going to kind of get adopted first. So that type of thing. So, so we, I mean, we've just, wanna... I mean, we've spent the last uh, almost hour talking about all of these electric vehicles. Yeah. And aside from issues of range and charging, and really range isn't even the issue. It's charging. People, yeah. people are used to driving their gas-powered vehicle, 250, 300, you know, maybe in some of the trucks with the bigger tanks, 400 miles. You stop, you spend five, maybe 10 minutes gassing up. Yeah, I was thinking 10. Yeah. So as long as you have your electric vehicle that has a range of three, 250, 300, 400 miles, and then you can charge up in 10 or 15 minutes, there there shouldn't be an issue there. Um, and when it comes to power, who in the right mind who values their diesels or their big V8s does not want instant electric torque. So from from that perspective alone, it seems like electric trucks should. I mean, the the market should just be screaming for electric trucks. But but there is this. But is it pickup truck culture that exists, particularly in America? I think. And you know, Smith, you and I have talked about this before the show. In my area, I live in kind of a this division zone. I live in a college town that also has a ton of farming. So we kind of have both. And I definitely see guys and lifted pickup trucks and stuff like that. And that exists, but it's not the overwhelming culture. Whereas from when you and I were talking, it kind of seems like the pickup trucks are the normal vehicle, especially modded pickup trucks for where you live. Is that fair? Well, I mean, I mean, I think they're the normal vehicle across the okay. United States. I mean, when you look at well, the sales yeah. stats, I mean, I mean, trucks far, far, far outsell any other vehicle by a wide margin. Um, I'm in I'm in Western South Dakota, where there are plenty of ranches. There are tons of people that have pickup trucks, and I mean, they use them as pickup trucks. And I'm I'm not saying you shouldn't go out and buy a pickup truck if that's what you like. Go do it, or what you um, need. If, if it's what you need, go do it. Um, or, or even if it's just what you like, if if you just like having the yeah. size and you like having the bed, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, th- there's absolutely nothing wrong. I've had a couple trucks myself. I've had a 99 Dodge Ram that I really just really didn't like. I only had it for like a couple months and it was just, it, it rode terribly. I was even trying to be nice with the, with the gas. It had the 5.9 and it was like 11 miles to the gallon baby in it. Um, and then I also had a Ford F-250 diesel, one of the older 7.3 diesels that I didn't like when I had it. But now if if I could find it, I would buy it back. I just there's just something I mean, it was the super cab long box. It was two wheel drive. It wasn't four. Um, I don't do a lot of hardcore off roading, so I don't really need that. But I mean, that's a good example. I just liked that truck and I would love to have it back. What I run into a lot out here, and I think a lot of people run into, is just sort of, and it's and it's been discussed, I think, in in general in a lot of areas, just kind of that almost toxic truck culture where people are just they're being obnoxious and loud and noisy. Not that you don't have that in pretty much any sort of vehicle genre, but when you, when you would look a little bit deeper, I mean, you kind of get a little bit of that. On a much much broader scale, I think, where you want your pickup truck, but you want your pickup truck with you know cool exhaust so you can hear the V8 rumble, or you want the pickup truck with the diesel, not and not just to you know crank up the mixture so it blows up black smoke, but you want you want the diesel because you like the diesel clatter, you like the feel of that torque. Will those people accept trucks that don't have diesel clatter? Will they accept trucks that don't have a V8 growl? And can they be patient enough to get 
to wait until the technology catches up so you can recharge your three or 400 mile range truck in about 15 minutes. And I mean, it's coming. It's going to happen eventually. The question is, will, will they be accepted or is it going to be like this, this hard fought tooth and nail battle? And honestly, I don't know. So let's let Tom weigh in. He is for this conversation our you know, our EV uh, expert. So Tom, what do you think? So I've given, I have given this a lot of thought and um, you know, I, you know, Christopher, you mentioned that, you know, we, we buy a lot of pickup trucks in the U.S. Do you know how many we buy in the U.S. per year? Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, million? I, I mean, it's, it's way over it. a million. Three million. Yeah. We, 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 U.S., we sell about three million pickup trucks. Pickup trucks are number one, number two, and number three yeah. in annual sales every year. And five out of the top ten sellers every year are pickup trucks. It's insane. You know, so we sell so many of them. And I think you're focusing on a percentage or a segment of that three million that will not be early adopters. You know, the pickup truck culture. But you know what? You can eliminate all of the people in that, say, segment of pickup truck sales and you still would have 2 million truck sales. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's true. We are talking about such a huge number. That's the thing. How many people use pickup trucks just as like their daily car? They don't, you know, and, and, and like you said, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, people, right. people, people just like pickup trucks and they drive them to the supermarket to get their groceries. They're not going off roading. They're not, it's not lifted with, 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 you know, um, rolling coal, uh, you know, outfitted onto it. These are just regular people that like to have the utility of a pickup truck on the odd occasion that they got to pick up a sofa or move a refrigerator or something like that. As I mentioned, I have a pickup truck. I really don't need a pickup truck other than the plowing aspect of it. Um, so I always have a pickup truck. I'm not a coal roller, good old boy mm-hmm. that, you know, that, uh, you know, is going to resist this. So, um, you know, if we were saying, oh, we need to transition to all 100 percent electric pickup truck sales by 2025, I'd say, OK, you're crazy. Well, yeah, that's not going to happen. happen. You know, it, we're not going to transition to electric cars that quick. Um, and, and just like the electric cars, there's going to be early adopters. There's going to be innovators. There's going to be early majority, then the majority, then the laggards, you know, and, the, and in the pickup truck culture, maybe the those, you know, the, the guys that have the the coal rolling diesel lifted truck are considered, you know, the laggards in the stages of innovation, you know. So um, I, I think that there's plenty of opportunity for all of these truck companies that come out with their electric trucks to be able to sell as many of them as they can produce as they come to market. Because like I said, it's not going to be okay in, in, in October of 2022, there's, we're going to have the capacity to make 2 million pickup trucks. That's not going to happen. It's You see how, the, the, especially Tesla and these startups, how long it takes them to get capacity up. They're not, you know, the GMs and the Fords that can just snap their finger and make, you know, you know, a hundred thousand vehicles in one year. Um, but even the Fords and the GMs won't be able to do that when their electric pickup trucks comes out because they're going to be constrained by their battery supply. Um, they don't have an unlimited battery supply. So in my opinion, the, the, you know, no, as many of these things come out, I think there'll be an opportunity for the manufacturer to sell them and there won't be, um, the, the, I think the, the demand and the supply will kind of mesh for a while. And this will be a gradual, you know, ramp up. And, and as the people that are hardcore electric uh, truck lovers, as they are exposed to pickups from their friends and family members over the course of the years, they see them driving down the road. They see the videos of say a Tesla cyber truck beating a, a, a lifted Ford F-150 in a tug of war and dragging <laughs> it in the mud, you know, and they'll say, you know, maybe that thing isn't that bad. And as far, but the, there's a couple things that will hold back pickup trucks. And that's when you tow with it, with a vehicle, it uses a lot more energy. So a pickup truck that say has a 300 mile range, if you're towing, you know, 5,000 pounds, um, you know, it might only have 150 mile range. You might've lost 50% of your range. So the, the, that's a problem um, that needs to, that needs to be overcome. Um, so, you know, there's going to be, use cases for electric pickup trucks immediately, they won't serve all purposes 
immediately. You know, this is going to be a gradual evolution to that. And as far as the charging goes, you know, I don't know if, if you guys are really up on just how fast electric car charging happens now. Um, if the oh, company it's, it's getting it. it's getting yeah. exceedingly quick. I mean, it, it's it's it seems like it, it's exponential almost on a on a. Yeah, semi annual basis. Yeah. The Porsche Taycan, for instance, can charge to 80% in 22 minutes. So now it's not the five or 10 minute stop. Um, it's going to be hard to crunch the numbers down to that, that five or 10 minutes. But most of these DC fast chargers are located in areas that have like food and drink, like convenience stores. Um, yep. at the, at, so what happens is, and when I go on road trips, um, I'll drive 200 miles, 250 miles. That's four hours of driving or so. You pull into one of these stations, you plug your car in, you walk in, you get a cup of coffee, you use the restroom, and you walk back out. It's 18 minutes later, and you've replenished 200 miles of range. So, you know, the, and that you're now you're good to go another three or four hours. You're not fully charged, but, um, you know, you, you, you can get 10 miles uh, you know, 10 to 12 miles a minute of range replenished with a, a fast charging electric vehicle today. And some of the new ones that are coming out are faster than that. The new Hyundai Ionic is something like 20 miles a minute it, it, it gets when it's charging. So th these are getting better and better, faster and faster. I think by, by 2025, you might see, um, you know, GM with their new Ultium battery packs that they're going to have in their cars. It might be a, a, a 12 minute stop to get 200 miles of range. And that's almost as good as gas. Yeah, it, it really is. Especially if you're, if you're, like you said, you're towing something. If you're towing something, you're going to have that mileage reduction with your gasoline engine anyways. Um, I think it's a case of people are just so used to it being this way for so long. Um, and there's such the, the, there's such a tight association with their vehicle and the sound. And I say that coming from, from a car and a Mustang guy. Um, I have loud exhaust on mine. I love it. But EVs and EV performance, I've been telling people, it's worthy of your attention. It's worthy of your love. It's a different experience, but it's not worse by any means. When you feel that instant hit torque just hit you, what, what performance person wouldn't love that? The only thing missing in, in the trucks here now is the sound. And I've I've talked to quite a few people that I consider, you know, truck people, not not bad truck people, but just but good truck people that that still they're still just put off. Ah, I just I, they just feel soulless. I, I want something that has that has the sound. Um, and I mean, I'm in Western South Dakota, so I mean, I, there are a lot of trucks out here. Um, I guess my, I guess what I wonder most of all, you have like the hardcore truck culture and then you have the larger mainstream, but I wonder how, how that smaller culture influences the mainstream to, to a certain degree. Like, I mean, how many, and, and, and maybe, maybe I need to grow my hair longer and, <laughs> and, 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 and just, you know, dive in, do some undercover investigative reporting. Um, but I, I mean, I'm just I'm, I'm very curious to to wonder how they're influenced by, you know, the, the, the tighter culture. I mean, maybe they don't put the louder exhaust or maybe they don't lift their truck, but hey, they like it. They think it's cool and, and they don't want to change that. I, I just want to build real quick on something that Tom mentioned uh, regarding charging is that the difference between filling your car up with gasoline and recharging your car is that. Every home in the United States has a 220 volt line coming into the house. Yeah. And for a relatively small investment, you can have that in your garage. And maybe you can't recharge your car to 100% every day, but you could, you know, you come home from work, you plug your car in, it recharges. And that's not, you know, you don't have gasoline in your garage every day where you can recharge your car. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about a situation where every day when you leave, you're at, let's call it 95% and you leave and that's, you know, that's good. And, you know, people are not towing every day or the vast, vast majority of people are not towing every day. That That's kind of a weekend thing. You're towing a boat, you're towing snowmobiles, you know, whatever. That 
And that's definitely a consideration. But for the vast majority of the amount of time, you're just going from home to work or whatever, that the advantage of EVs is that you don't really have to worry about filling up, quote unquote, that there's not a gas station to go to. The gas station is in your garage. You're 100 percent right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mentioned the DC fast charging um, for when you do need to take the road trips, because on occasion we all need to go far. And also it depends on where where you live. You know, if you live in South Dakota, (laughs) it's different than, you know, New Jersey here where I can go to New York City and back and and I don't need to DC fast charge. But the majority of your charging will be done at home. And Chris, I will correct you for one second. You will leave with 100 percent charged every day. Um, as long as you match, I was the just right, being conservative. Just that, to no, more than that. I mean, you, you're, you, you, as long as you match the right charging equipment to to your vehicle, um, it'll be charged within a few hours of you getting home. Let alone fully charged to 100. Let alone you, you know, by the next morning, it's almost always fully charged. Um, and uh, you know, so you, you'd only use public charging infrastructure on the occasions when you're really going somewhere far. Other than that, every day it would. It's like if, if you have a gas car, it's almost like in the middle of the night, the car starts itself up and drives to a gas station by itself, fills itself up and comes back to your driveway because every morning you wake up, the needle is on F, um, it, no matter what you drove the day before. And, and one thing we hadn't mentioned was the savings. You know, uh, if you have an electric, uh, if you have a pickup truck and you're spending right now $300, $250, $300 a month in diesel, which you can easily do with yeah. a pickup truck. That $300 is going to be about $80 in electricity. That's how much the savings are. Now, it does depend where you live because electricity prices uh, is, is fluctuates regionally. But the average, for if you're going to talk about the average price of electricity uh, throughout the country right now, um, you'd probably spend about a third of what it will cost you for the to refuel the comparable pickup truck that's with diesel. One third of the price. So every month you're saving $150, $200. I mean, that goes towards the truck's payment, you know, so um, yeah. uh, you're, you're really going to appreciate the, the the savings on the electric with the truck. And oh. and for fleet use, um, that's going to be a tremendous cost savings for fleet use. Absolutely. I remember, and I, I can't remember the specific uh, the specifics on some of the studies I've seen, but in some cases, fleets can actually get a full return on investment in their, in their electric vehicles in like two or three years. There's a full, six, full return. 60% savings across the board with electric vans and trucks, 60% savings overall running costs between fuel and maintenance. Cause don't forget there's almost no maintenance on, on electric vehicles. You, you change the tires, the wiper blades, there's no tune ups, oil changes, belts, None of that stuff. You don't have to worry about a muffler rotting out, catalytic converter. You know, somebody driving over something and ripping off the exhaust. Um, it's it's it, there's almost virtually no maintenance. And and I and I wanted to say something when you were talking before, and you said there's two cases for the pickups. You know, the 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 regular you know normal folk, and then the you know the hardcore truckers. And I wanted to interject and say no no no. There's three. It's fleets because the the fleets, fleets are are going once the bean counters really get a look at the savings that they're going to that that they're going to make you're going to see electric pickup trucks cascade over um businesses that use pickup trucks it's it's uh, you know uh, they they and they know these vehicles have set routes they have set they know how much it's going to the average truck drives every day so they'll know if the range is going to be good or not i mean some of the businesses don't have set routes but in many instances the average person's going to drive, say, 100 miles a day or whatever to do whatever he needs to do. Um, and they know that it works. It comes back in the yard. It plugs in in the yard where all these the, the trucks are parked. The next morning, it's it's good to go again. So um, I, I think delivery vans and pickup trucks are going to be – they're actually going to sell at a, a pace faster than what we see um, personal people buying cars do. Once these electric vans and electric pickup trucks hit the market, th- they're gonna, they're gonna, ex- the sales are gonna just blow up for fleet use. No, I think you're right. And I know there are a lot of people listening right now that are gonna be like, I get the bean counters out of it. I want my noise, I want my engine. But you know what else you love people? Money. 
<laughs> There's no argument against that. Nobody, nobody, nobody likes going to the gas station and plucking out 50, 60, 70 bucks to fill up the vehicle. Not even if you have the money to burn. And uh, I guess uh, I'm reminded of actually back when I was in Michigan, I was living in Ann Arbor, commuting back and forth to Dearborn. That was back in, uh, you know, right when the the, the, the end of the, the 2000s, when the fuel prices were really starting to spike. And I mean, I wasn't driving a truck at that point, but I thought, man, if I could find me a three cylinder Geo Metro right now, <laughs> Just for a little throwaway commuter car, and I found one. And on the highway, floored 75 miles an hour is about maximum speed. I'm going down I-94 between Ann Arbor and Dearborn. And, I mean, I'm still getting like 45, 50 miles to the gallon. The price that I paid for that car, it paid for itself in fuel in a month. And I remember one day specifically I'm driving back home. And, hey, you know what? I'm on I-94. I don't care how I look. It's 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 freaking I-94. I hated that road. Anyways, I'm going along and it's Friday. I've got a weekend. You know, I just got paid lots of money. And, uh, you know, I think it was like an H2, you know, goes past me in the left lane. And I'm just thinking, how much is he spending? And, you know, how much is he worried about his car payment and trying to figure out, uh, OK, I got to set aside this much for fuel because gas at that point was like 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 three dollars and 50 cents a gallon and i'm like i'm just, I'm just gonna i'm gonna go home and just relax and roll in my money <laughs> okay guys we gotta wrap this show up we all have more that we can it's say a little I, creepy sorry so no you're not it's not creepy it's okay no, it's a little super creepy. super quick point and this is a conversation i had with someone who was talking to me about how automatics have taken over manuals in the united states and that's a true statement but yeah. my counter argument is that there are still millions of manual transmission equipped cars that you could buy and run. In fact, you know, I own one. But, and I think the same thing is true that is going to happen over the years between EVs and yes. V8s or combustion engines, however you want to place it, that people who want to buy EVs certainly can and at some point there are still going to be millions of v8 or combustion powered cars in this country because they're still around so and because so many were made you're yeah. absolutely right yeah so if that's your passion go for it that there's nothing wrong with that like yeah okay so but we have <laughs> <laughs> we have reached the end of the show tonight um tom thank you very much do you have Twitter, like it's Instagram. Do you have any way that you like people to contact you or, so, you know, connect well, with you? Yeah, well, I am on Twitter. It's at Tomolog, T-O-M-M-O-L-O-G. But um, I'd really like to uh, promo a YouTube channel. I do. Sure, go uh, for it. I have a YouTube channel. It's called State of Charge with Tom Mologany. And uh, I just hit 10,000 subscribers two days oh, ago. Oh, congratulations. So, Good deal. Uh, I'm, I'm, psyched, I'm psyched about that. I do electric um, car reviews, electric car range tests, and a lot with a lot of geeky stuff with electric car charging. I'm cool. kind of known for electric car charging. I do these in-depth reviews of electric car charging stations. So that's kind of like my niche. But yeah, um, and you see right behind me up here, that's the logo of my YouTube channel, that little charger in a blue circle. Um, okay. So definitely check, check me out on YouTube at State of Charge. Yeah, absolutely. everyone do we'll that. Have, That's fantastic. We'll have the links for you. Um, you know, Bruce, uh, we, sh we should also tell people that if you want to follow us on Twitter, I'm at CH Writing. Bruce, you're on Twitter, right? Yeah, I am. Uh, Chris Bruce, C-H-R-I-S-B-R-U-C-E, 1985-1985. I'll, uh, I'll admit, I don't, uh, I'm not the type of person that tweets all the time, but when I do tweet, you need to hear it. I retweet a lot of nerdy uh, Japanese models. So not like lady models, like, like car models, car models. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like robot okay. models more specifically. OK. Um, and video games. Um, uh, so, yeah, you'll find me there. But thanks for listening again. Podcast at Motor One dot com. If you have any like Bronco questions, get them to us quickly, because obviously, Ted, he can't answer them immediately. So if you have a Bronco question, a Bronco history question, throughout the model's range like get him to us quickly and we'll ask him and he can probably find that stuff out and that'll be next week so yeah and if you, you have much. any any comments on this episode any, course, any passions it. on evs shoot us the email we'd love to hear from you yeah well thank you very much and have a good evening bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.